Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I just wanted to go over something called tuples, or tuples, I've heard them pronounced. Um, I'm going to call them tuples. And to be honest, even Google doesn't know how to say it. If we go over to Google, we've got this. Tuple. And then we have this. Tuple. So who knows? So let's just get started. So this, so tuples became available in C Sharp 7 um, and onwards. And the tuples feature uh, provides concise syntax so you can group multiple data elements together uh, in a lightweight data structure. Um, and I'm going to go through uh, quite a lot of different examples of what they are, how they work, how you can access them, um, as well as some reason you would use them and some reasons you wouldn't use them. But before we jump into today's video, I just want to tell you about today's sponsor. If you've got big dreams of being a solo indie dev or even a jack of all trades indie on a small team, you're going to need more than coding skills. So once you've set up your cool player controller, you're going to need to have a environment for them to run around in. And that's where Game Dev TV and Grant Abbott's new environment art course comes in. The course uses Blender 3.1 and teaches you basically everything that you need to know to go from zero to making beautiful, unique environments for your games. The entire course is project based, so you'll get to work straight away on developing new skills. And if you use the link in the description, you'll get a very generous 90% off the price. But oh, back to the video. So there are a few ways you can um, declare a tuple variable. So the syntax is like this. So you've got your open brackets, we would do bool, and then a comma, and then another data type. So we'll use a float, and then uh, we could also do a long and a double, and we can call this tuple, and then we equal it to, and then we just kind of put in values for the stuff we've defined on the left. So you can see here that we've defined a bool and an int, and I've called our tuple, tuple, t1. Um, and then I've set that equal to true for the bool and three for the int. They need to be in the right order. If I put three here and true here, that's uh, not going to work. You see type int doesn't match expected type bool. So they have to be in the corresponding order. So bool, int, and then we've got our bool value and our um, int value. And then to access the elements within our tuple, you can see here I've got a debug.log and we say the first element is accessed like this. And you can put T1, which is the name of our tuple. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Tuple. I'm going to go with tuple because it's easier to say than tuple. Um, our tuple. So we've got T1 and then we access it um, by using the descriptor or the sort of default name uh, item one. And that gets the first item in the tuple. It's not zero based like an array. So it's there's no item zero, it's just item one, item two. So the bool is item one, the int's item two. Um, and if we run that, you can see that that's how that works. So click this button up here, run code. The first element is accessed like this, and it's true because we've set it to true. And the second like this, and then obviously that's three because we set it to three. And this is when you don't use um, field names, then it gets assigned item one and item two as their default names. So let's go on to the next example. Okay, so you can actually define field names and then call them by the field names. So here we've got um, a float, which is my float, and a vector three, which is uh, my vector. And I've just called this tuple T2. And I've initialized it with a float of one F. Um, let's actually make that useful as a float. So, you know, 1.254 F and vector three dot up. And then you can see here in the debug.log, I'm just doing the exact same thing as up here, but now I'm accessing it instead of by item one, I'm accessing it by the field name that we defined. So we run that code. So now you can see the first element is accessed like this, which is what we've done up here. And the first element is accessed with its field name and it's printed out our um, float and a vector, which has gone off the, which went off the screen. So there's our vector, which is just vector three um, dot up. Let's make that a bit longer. And it's worth noting that the field names don't replace the default names. Um, so for example, you could have my float and then you could say item two and that's the same thing that'll do the exact same thing so it's still got our vector um so they don't replace the default names it's just an easy way for you to kind of label what exactly um these things are and what they're referring to but let's look at the next line of code so we'll move this to here so we've got tuple names can also be inferred by their corresponding variables so you can see here that i've declared an int which is called my int and i've set that equal to one I've got a double called my double and set that equal to 2.4. And then I've created a new 
var t3, and I've set that equal to, and then I've opened up my brackets, and then I've just put my in and my double. And you can see riders here telling me that this is a system.value tuple. So we've got my in and my double, and we've set that to t3. And then I can access it like this. So I've got t3 dot my int, which is the name of the variable that I'd already um, created and same with my double. And again, we could put, uh, you know, item two, that'd still work. And we'll go back to unity, let's clear the log, run our code. And you can see I can access it like this. And it's got my int and my double and it's printed them out. So moving on. So here you can see that tuples can have uh, an arbitrary large number of elements and the type can be inferred from the data that you put directly into it as well. So we've got our variable t4, and that's equal to, and then I've just created uh, 20 elements in our tuple, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to 10, and then I've put true, which is a bool, 12, 13, 14, I've stuck a vector in there, and I've gone all the way through to um, element 20. And then we can access these with our default names, um, like we did earlier, and we've got t4, item 11, which should be this bool here. So let's uh, try that out. We'll run our code and you can access these with their default names true because item 11 is this element is this element here. So true. So you can also check tuples for equality using our equals or not equals sign. Tuples need to have the same number of elements. So we've got a double and an int and a double and a long. There's one element and two elements, and that's the same for both of them. And the types need to be comparable. So we've got a double and a double. They're comparable because you can compare them because they're the same thing. And an int and a long are comparable because they're inherently comparable. We couldn't do um, like string and then two because um, even though that's a valid tuple and so is that, you can't compare them. And if we look, it'll say cannot imply the operator um, to type of int and string. So you need to make sure that they are of the same type that you're comparing. And then we can see, uh, let's check if they are equal. So we'll go over to our code, we'll run it, and they are equal. That's true. So we've got 1.5 and 1.5 and 2 and 2. So that's how you can compare tuples. So for large data containers, um, instead of doing, you know, this mess here where we had loads of um, bits of data in our tuples, you're probably best off creating a struct um, because they're a lot more organized and you can also run methods within structs as well to do some interesting stuff. So I've got a struct here called uh, just my struct. And I've defined that it's um, an int and it's got a bool and it's got a my vector. Uh, we've got a public constructor, which just takes in an int and a bool and a vector and assigns them to these public properties. And then we've also got a method here, which is public void my struct method. And here I'm just setting a random number to my int. The bool is going to be set based on what this int turns out to be. And then I'm setting a new vector with zero, my int and one. Um, in it. That's a good powerful thing about structs is that you can define methods uh, in them. And if you look at some built in structs, so for example, uh, we've got vector three here, which is um, a struct by unity. And you can see that we've got our public floats, public read only vectors. So we've got a private static read only vector three, zero vector. Um, which is just returning a new vector three of zero, zero, zero. We've got vector one, which is one, 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 up, down, uh, left, right, forward, etc. And you can see here that they've defined their uh, methods. So there's slurp, slurp unclamped, ortho normalize. So structs are very powerful. So let's just see that working here. So if we just clear our log and we'll just run this bit of code. So this is my struct and we're printing out my int because with our struct, uh, we've passed into the constructor one true and vector three dot right. And then this is my struct and then we're passing out um, my struct one. And then here we've created another struct. We've ran our struct method and then we're printing out the values from our struct. So we can see this is my struct that used a method. My int was 84. That was greater than 50. So that's true. And then we've put 84 into our vector. And then obviously we could run that numerous times and that'd be different based on how many times we run it. So why would you bother then using tuples instead of structs when, you know, they seem a lot cleaner and you can run functionality? Well, one good use case of um, tuples is that they can be used as a return type for a method. So let's consider the following two methods. So I have here 
Um, does player have item out params? And this is a method that I'll show you in a sec. And then we've got, does player have item? And this is using a tuple. And so from here, you know, we haven't saved a lot. We haven't saved sort of any code lines. If anything, this one's a little bit longer because we've had to put the name of the variable and then access the property within it. But if we actually go and look at the um, methods, so I've got a region here called methods. So here we've got static bool has item. I'm saying if we have an item, item held equals, and then I'm just creating a new item called sword. And I'm saying that we have one of those items and, and then I'm returning true because we want to check whether the player has an item. And then we're passing out the out parameters. So if the player does have an item, we're going to pass out the item held and the amount of that item. And now this is obviously a very set up case. You'd have something probably a lot more complex in this case. I'm setting has item to true here, so it will always pr print true. But if this was an actual method and you were querying a player's inventory, has item may not be true. So I've just set this up as kind of an example. You can see here that we've got a good chunk of code and then we're having to pass out the parameters. And then when we use the method, we have to, st we can store the bool that the, um, method is returning into this has out params and then we can get out our item held and our item amount and then we can debug.log it um, and we can say the player has say one sword. Then we've also got this uh, does player have item tuple method. So if we go see that, so this is just a static and instead of void or instead of bool, it's just returning a tuple. So we've got our brackets here and this is our tuple. Um, you don't need to put the names in it. So if I wanted, I could remove um, these and have it even more uh, kind of sort of concise and then we'd access it here just like we do in with our other tuples so we'll do item one item two and three but I like putting the field names in next to the types and you can see this is a lot cleaner so we're checking here um, we're just returning and based on whether we have an item or not I've opened up our bracket so I'm sort of constructing this tuple to return I'm saying true because we have the item I'm creating a new item called shield and I'm saying we've got one shield if we don't have the item then I'm just going to pass back out false null and negative one so back up in our code here I've got var has item tuple and I've just stored the tuple from our method and then I can access it just like I would any other tuple I'd say has item tuple dot item found or like I showed, we could say item one if we wanted to do it like that. And then I'm just debug.logging player has the amount held and the item name. So we run this code. So the player has one sword. So that's from this here running this code. And then player has one shield and that's this here running this code. And if you'd prefer, one way of doing this and having it look a little bit cleaner is if we just comment out this and uncomment this, you can actually deconstruct the tuple that this is returned into its sort of like constituent parts. So we've got item found, bool, item, and item held. And then we can just say if item found, player has amount held and item dot name. So this itself looks quite a lot cleaner than this. And it's using this method, which is a lot cleaner than this. So this is a really good use case for tuples. And it's kind of you know, the main use case. As I said, if you were going to have any large amounts of data, you'd probably want to do a struct and then you get the benefits of having methods uh, within the struct. But for doing methods like this, where you want to return more than one piece of data. So here I wanted to return a bool, an item and amount held based on this bool. We can do that very easily. Um, using tuples. So I hope you found this video useful. If you want access to this code, just to have a play around and dig around and kind of deconstruct it yourself, the project files are available over on Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, I'd just like to thank my 10,000 XP tier members, which we have Sector Suite, and also all of the other 4,000 XP tier members, which you can see on screen here. Thanks a lot for your support, everyone. What do you think of tuples? Do you think they're good, bad, um, you indifferent? Let me know in the comments below. And for the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.